this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the story of the assassination of Thomas Sankara, one of the youngest persons to lead an African country as head of state. He became president at the age of 33, and at the time of his assassination, he was only 37 years old. Thomas was a charismatic leader with a large following and appreciation at home and abroad. Thomas was gone down at his prime, but his name resonates globally till today. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Thomas Sankara was trained as a soldier, but the circumstances of his country brought him into governance. He was first brought into governance as Prime Minister during the regime of President Jean Baptiste Philippe. At that time, his country was known as the Republic of Upper Volta. Thomas served as Prime Minister from November 9, 1982 to August 4, 1983, when President Jean Baptiste fell out with him and got him arrested and detained along with many other persons whom the president viewed as being pro Sankara. There is no evidence to date that Sankara committed any offense while serving as prime minister to warrant being ordered to be arrested and detained by the president. Fingers rather point to the fact that Sankara as prime minister had become more popular and well loved by his people, military and civilians than the president and the president then began to scheme how to remove him from power. Captain Blaise Compaore, a long-standing friend of Thomas Sankara, was one of the military officers that was penciled to be arrested and detained, but he escaped arrest and ran to a military garrison where he took residence and received the protection of fellow soldiers. While in the garrison, Blaise Compaore began to organize resistance against Philippe's government while calling for the release of his friend, Prime Minister Thomas Sankara. In no time, large demonstrations occurred in the state capital, Ouagadougou, in support of Thomas Sankara, with people calling for his release from custody. President Philippe came under intense pressure and released Thomas Sankara from custody. Not long after his release, the president ordered for him to be rearrested and kept under house arrest. This action led to the mobilization of troops by Blaise Compaore to remove the president from power. The capital city of Ouagadougou and the residence of the president were surrounded by armed soldiers. And the president was asked to resign his office with an option to be relocated to any other country of his choice. The president stepped aside but pleaded to be allowed to remain in his country. His plea was accepted and in his place, the coup plotters quickly released Thomas Sankara and made him the new president of Upper Volta. Thomas Sankara's ascendancy to power is credited largely to the effort of his friend Blaise Compaore who was Sankara's friend of many years. Ironically, in three years' time, Thomas Sankara would be assassinated by soldiers led and commanded by the same friend of his, Blaise Compaore. Thomas Sankara began his administration in earnest in 1983, and in no time, he was already hitting the ground running. He changed the name of his country from Republic of Upper Volta, which was a name given by the colonial masters, and renamed the country as Burkina Faso, meaning the land of upright and incorruptible people. He personally composed a national anthem for the new country. Burkina Faso is arguably the only country till date whose national anthem was composed by its sitting president. Sankara was a Marxist and Pan-Africanist. He immediately introduced measures to drastically reduce the cost of governance. 
He suspended the purchase and use of Mercedes-Benz cars by public officials, including himself, and gave approval for the purchase of less expensive vehicles, such as Renault. He embarked on land reforms aimed at making land available for small, medium, and large-scale agriculture for food sufficiency in the country and for possible exports. He launched a nationwide literacy campaign and increased the enrollment of children in schools. Education was free for all. He promoted public health and sponsored the vaccination of more than 2 million children against meningitis, yellow fever, and measles, which saves the lives of between 30,000 to 50,000 children every year. Several schools, health centers, and water reservoirs were built by his administration. He also built nearly 100 kilometers of rail. All this without borrowing money from any institution and without foreign aid. Thomas Sankara abolished female genital mutilation in the whole of Burkina Faso. He appointed women into public offices in the country and encouraged female participation in politics and in governance. He also abolished forced marriages. He built pharmacies in 5,384 villages out of 7,500 villages in the country to assist in medical emergencies. During his administration, school attendance increased from 6% to 22% and child mortality rate dropped drastically in the whole of the country. Thomas had zero tolerance to corruption and lived a modest lifestyle even as president. He prohibited his ministers from flying first class with government money on the philosophy that when the plane takes off, everyone takes off with the plane. When it lands, everyone lands. With these steps, Thomas Sankara was loved and appreciated by the majority of his countrymen and women. He was seen as a charismatic leader with an unflinching love for his people. Despite being president, Thomas was very close to his people. He played volleyball with the youth from time to time and also embarked on other forms of exercise such as bicycle riding across long distances with several young persons riding with him in their bid to keep fit. Thomas was nicknamed the Che Guevara of Africa, a name given after a popular Cuban revolutionary figure, Che Guevara. Thomas Sankara's deed were also noticed and appreciated in several countries of the world. He won awards of excellence in leadership. He traveled widely and also addressed the United Nations Assembly and other international gatherings during his tenure. He was a hard-working leader who spent much of his time in his office, holding meetings with ministers, contractors, attending to files and memos, and many others, all in his bid to better the lot of his countrymen. But his tenure will soon be truncated and his life gruesomely terminated. On October 15, 1987, Thomas Sankara had scheduled a meeting with his ministers and a few other persons in the president's office. Sankara was seated for the meeting with the ministers in attendance. A few minutes into the meeting, the presidential office was surrounded by armed soldiers and Thomas Sankara was commanded to lift up his hands and walk out from the exit door. Sankara did as commanded and in few minutes, he was shot several times from the back and killed on the spot. In the most brutal, and heart-wrenching man. The assassins did not stop at that. They went back into the meeting room and shot and killed 12 other persons that were with the president. In what looked like a well-calculated plan to cover up the massacre, Thomas Sankara's body was quickly buried in an unmarked grave by the coup plotters. The other persons killed were also hurriedly buried Sankara's wife, Mariam Sankara, 
fled the country with her two children and settled in France for about 27 years for fear that she could also be killed. Sankara's life as the youngest and the most charismatic president of Burkina Faso was effectively brought to an end in the most brutal manner by troops led by his bosom friend and comrade, Blaise Compaore. Compaore immediately took over the reins of power and reversed most of Sankara's policies. He went on to rule for 27 years until he was overthrown in 2014 by popular protest. He was later found guilty of complicity in the killing of Thomas Sankara and sentenced to life imprisonment. A man known as Halona Traore was in the meeting room with Sankara and the slain ministers. He witnessed the invasion of the meeting room by armed soldiers and the random shooting of 12 ministers. He pled dead to save his life. He was the only survivor and his survival was simply a miracle. At the time of the making of this video in 2022, Halona Traore is still alive and has severally narrated the experience of the ill-fated day as follows. Unquote. We had a meeting in this room around 4 p.m. The comrade president arrived last. We were waiting for him in the meeting room here. And as he arrived, the meeting began. So we started the meeting and as I had just been sent to Benin for a mission, I had the floor. I had just enough time to say I left Ouagadougou and start my report when we heard shooting from outside and someone shouted in a rather strong tone, get out, get out, get out. So after these orders, the comrade president got up, adjusted his clothing and went out that way through the door with his hands up. He was shot at point blank range at the entrance to that door. Unquote. Thomas Sankara's wife demanded for the exhumation of the remains of her husband for proper burial and for the sake of closure. But according to the BBC News of 25 May 2015, her demand was rejected throughout the regime of Blaise Compaore. In 2015, after Blaise Compaore had left office, permission was given by the succeeding government for the exhumation of what is believed to be the remains of Captain Thomas Sankara. Autopsy was conducted and as reported by International Business Times UK of 14th October 2015, the autopsy report revealed that Sankara's body was riddled with more than a dozen bullets. Sankara's grave has become a tourist site today for several persons across Burkina Faso and beyond. Bless Compaore and Thomas Sankara were the best of friends for several years. They wore the same ranks in the military from time to time. At the time Sankara was killed, Sankara was a captain. Bless Compaore was also a captain. According to the New York Times of October 26, 1987, I quote, These two young military officers were inseparable friends. They trained together and ate together. Every member of the Sankara family knew Bless Compaore as Thomas's best friend. Thomas Sankara's father took Bless Compaore as his son. In a story published in the Nation newspaper of October 17, 2021, it is reported that for many years, Sankara's father waited for Blaise Kampaure, his adopted son, to come and explain to him what happened between him and his adopted brother and friend, Thomas Sankara. While granting an interview to CGTN, that is, China Global Television Network, on a program titled Faces of Africa, Pascal Campbell, Sankara's co friend, stated as follows on the same issue unquote, 
Sankara's father had always expected Blaze to come and explain what happened to him. Each time I went over to see him, he would say to me, Pascal, your brother Thomas has left, but your other brother Blaze, I am waiting for him to come and tell me what happened. Why did Thomas die? How did he die? And then I will forgive him because he is my son. I consider him like my son. Pascal added that, unquote, Blaze never set his foot in the Sankara's home again up until the two parents died. Captain Thomas Sankara was born into a Catholic family in December 1949. His parents wanted him to be a Catholic priest, but he opted to pursue a career in the military where he did creditably well and had a beautiful career ahead of him. Sankara kept his Catholic faith till his death. He became president at the age of 33. He was a president with an unusual passion for his people and for the development of his motherland. At the time of his death, he was only 37 years old. Thomas Sankara remains an iconic figure in leadership at home and abroad. Thank you for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel for regular notifications.